Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, PX Grid, and Firepower for User Identity. All right, we're going to start nice and we're going to go to Administration, System, Settings, or you could have went to Deployment. Now we'll pivot over to Deployment now. Now you're going to enable this on your nodes that you want PX Grid to run on. I only have a single node here, but um, again, you'll, you'll do this on your distributed deployment most likely. Go ahead and enable this, hit save. This is gonna take some time. So you're gonna be a little bit patient here while all the, the services get started. Now you can check that by going into the ICE console and run show application status ICE and then include PX Grid. Now this will take some time. Generating this output takes some time and running that or getting all those services takes some time. So be a little patient here. You can see the first time I run the command, it's still showing as not running. And we'll go ahead and run that command again. And now we see that the processes are all running. So we've got PX Grid up and running. Everything's looking good so far. And from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into PX Grid Services and we're gonna validate that we also see um, everything looking good there as well. And it'll show or highlight an area within the console that lets you know that it's running. So we'll do that now. We'll go ahead and, and, and click PX Grid Services. And all clients here, and you can see at the bottom here, connected via XMPP, and then it's got the ICE node that it's enabled on. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna to jump to Firepower and we're gonna go ahead and generate a certificate signing request for Firepower where we can use our, our Enterprise Root CA to sign it and then we're gonna trust between ICE and, and Firepower. So let's go ahead, sudo open SSL generate RSA. Our, our output is gonna be fmc.key and then the size is 4096 in this case. Go ahead and put in a password because we're using sudo. And generating RSA private key. So now we've got the private key created. Now we're going to create the certificate signing request. So sudo open SSL. We're going to do a request and we're going to go dash new dash key fmc.key. So the private key that we just generated, the output is going to be fmc.csr. And we'll go ahead and enter the fields here. So country, state, province, locality, maybe your organization name. If you wanna put an OU name in there, common name, fmc-1 in my case, and then maybe an email address. Perfect. Okay, we'll come back to that. Now let's go to Microsoft uh, Certificate Authority. So this is started. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that web server certificate template and we're gonna modify it for PX Grid. And really the only thing that we're doing here is outside of changing the name, we're gonna call it PX Grid and we're gonna give the validity five years, right? Maybe one year is good enough. Uh, obviously shorter uh, means more renewals but obviously more secure as well and what we're going to do is make sure that we have both server and client authentication so the web server already had server authentication what we're going to do is add client authentication as well so now we have server and client everything looks good there um, in the subject name we made sure supply in the request and that was part of that web server certificate template already so we're good there so now we've got this template created but as you can see it's not available so what we have to do is come in here and say new template to issue and we're going to find our px grid template that we just created and we're going to say okay make sure your services is up and running so make sure that you go in and, and start the certificate authority And I did that, so we're good. So now we've got, we can go ahead and grab that CSR, and all we have to do is CAD it. You can save it out if you want to putty into it or whatever, um, and, or when uh, SCP, but you can just CAD it. 
anyways copy it in request px grid and it's auto um, uh, provisioned and and go ahead and maybe rename that cert new uh, in in my case rename it to something uh, a little bit more meaningful and that's great and now we're going to download the ca certificate as well so let's go ahead and do that and again rename that into something more meaningful so i got ca cert dot sir and then fmc dot sir so i've got the fmc uh, certificate the client certificate for fmc and um, or the px certificate for both server and client authentication and now i've got the trusted ca so we want to import that trusted ca into F, uh, fmc and we're going to do that with ice as well so they trust the certificate um, from active directory so we've done that everything looks good let's pivot back over to ice And we'll go into trusted certificates. We're gonna import that trusted uh, certificate. So that CA um, uh, cert that we downloaded from Microsoft root CA. Maybe give it a friendly name. And you can see here, you can um, enable a, a bunch of different capabilities that the certificate's gonna be used for. We're just gonna use trust for authentication within ICE for now. Um, you can extend that capabilities. I might do that in later uh, videos. So we've got that in, and now what we need to do is, again, do the CSR. So we need to create a certificate signing request. And we're gonna go ahead in, this is for this node. Fill in the same types of thing that we just filled in in the other one. And you can see it's got a, a, a wild card for common name. And we'll go ahead and generate that. We'll export it. We can see ice one multi use dot pem. We'll go into Active Directory. We're going to request a certificate. Advanced certificate. We're going to pick PX Grid. And we're going to go back to that export here and we're going to edit it and we're going to grab it and paste it in. And we'll hit submit and we'll download the certificate. And again, give it a name that is meaningful. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually bind the certificate to that certificate signing request. So we're just gonna grab that ICE-1 and give it px grid usage and again there's multiple different um, services that you can leverage it for go ahead and check it out in system certificates we should see it there and now available for px grid okay so now we're back to fmc i know we're bouncing back and forth um, but there's a, a method to this madness here we're going to go ahead and add an identity source and that's going to be identity services engine. So we got to pick the PX grid server CA. So that's going to be the imported CA that we just imported into FMC. We're going to use that for MNT, the monitoring and troubleshooting node. And then FMC certificate, this is where we're going to finish off that CSR request that we just did earlier. So let's go ahead and grab FMC.sir. So there's the certificate, but we need the private key as well. And so that's where we're going to jump back to the FMC console and we're going to cat FMC dot key and that's the private key and we'll copy and paste that in. And we'll go ahead and hit save. Do a quick test. Let's see if we got some connectivity with ICE. It's the server certificate and client certificate working on both ends and it looks good, right? Success and it gives you some output here that you can analyze as required. So beauty.
we've got it up and running. We'll go look at PX Grid Services and we can see this st.fmc or dash fmc.cisco local da 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 da. Okay, awesome. So it looks like that's working so far. So let's go ahead and we'll jump back into FMC. We'll save this out. We're gonna go to realms and we're gonna add a new realm. So go ahead and give it a name. The type is Active Directory. Type in the primary domain. Put in your AD join username. Go ahead and type in a password. Directory username, directory password, your base DN, your group DN, and then your group attribute is gonna be member. So again, you can use uh, a more restrictive account in doing this as well. Now we'll go ahead and add a directory. This is the server itself. We'll go ahead and save it. So we've got our realm and we've got our server. You might have multiple, most likely you're gonna have multiple. You have to make sure you enable that state, but it's not gonna do anything yet. So let's go back in and edit it because what we have to do is tell it what groups that we wanna pull from. So let's go into user download. We were gonna download users and groups and you can schedule when you want to do that. We're going to add a couple here, VPN group, domain users, IT, sales, um, maybe HR, maybe domain admins. We want to restrict the, their ability to do certain things from certain areas in the environment. Right? If they're logged into a, a server, do you want them surfing the internet? Maybe not. So again, these would, could be used in policy later. And the whole idea around, and you go ahead and hit download, but the whole idea around using Identity Services Engine and PXGrid is, is that even though you have the identity, access policy is not going to work until that identity can be translated into an IP address. Remember, the firewall is an L3, L4 type control. So, well, L7 too with application, but for, for um, to invoke a policy, uh, you need an IP address. All right, so now what we need to do is create an identity policy, and this is gonna be attached to our access control policy. So I like looking at these as objects or more advanced objects where you're building a policy. It could be SSL policy, a malware policy, an IPS policy. Once you build them, they still don't do anything until you apply it to an access control policy. So this is gonna be passive, it's Cisco AD, it's all zones maybe, right? Um, then you come into realm settings, go ahead and select the realm that we just created and we can go ahead and hit add. And we can save this out and as I said earlier, this does nothing until you apply it to an access control policy. So it's just a, like I said, an advanced object at this point in time. Go ahead and go into policy, access control. Go ahead, hit, hit edit. And here we're gonna add identity policy and drop that down. We'll have one or more options. We only have one in this case because that's what we created. And now I can build access control policy using user identity, like HR, IT, or a user in HR, as an example. I'm not gonna do that. I, all I wanna do is show you the user to IP mappings actually being um, shared between the platforms. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hit deploy. We'll push this out. Go ahead, let's double check the settings here. We'll go ahead and hit deploy. We're not gonna wait for this. It's gonna take a minute or so to deploy. In the meantime, I've got uh, a, a VPN head end. It's actually ASA, it's not even firepower. And we're gonna log in and it's gonna authenticate using Identity Services Engine. So there's a radius request to Identity Services Engine that's gonna leverage Active Directory. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the IP that we got. And if everything's good, we should see this translated into uh, firepower. So we can see that Identity Services sees it 
we can see the IP address. We can look at the live session. We see HR1. Right there's the IP. Got the user identity. So I obviously you know passed uh, the authentication authorization. So we're good here. And look at that in Firepower in analysis user active sessions. Look at that. We see HR. We even see some of the attributes from from Active Directory. But we got that IP address. Right, you can see that as well, and that's what's going to be important in all of this, right? There's a piece that can be pulled using um, that uh, realm that we created, but we need the user to IP mapping. So let's go ahead and triple check this and look at the actual Firepower device to see if we see any mappings. So you can use the system support firewall engine dump user identity data. Go ahead and run that. Go into expert mode. The best way I found this was just do a sudo find that user underscore identity dump and you can, uh, I think it's var, the, the NGFW var one, I can use volume one and I, I saw the data as well. But you can see here's that, that 172, let's just scroll down here. So we can see number of hosts, number of users, one one, let's scroll back down. And we should see the IP address in here. And there you go. So this was not even part of that flow, right? It was an ASA VPN head end that I terminated to. But yet, Firepower knows about it. Again, looking in table events, we can see the IP address. And uh, I've got a passive uh, port for um, IDS functionality. And so I can see some of the traffic. And you can see here sales one and the initiator IP. Now, ultimately, you probably want to run a policy just to validate, but since we see the IP address actually on Firepower, which is not in the flow whatsoever, we know that it's passing. Here we can pivot into Context Explorer and see some specific details around that user, network information, SSL information. You got applications, whether it's app, web app, client app, or application protocols. And again, I don't have any data here because I didn't generate anything, but you get the idea I can see you know, intrusion events, file types, I can see geolocation information, I can see the traffic by URL. So pretty neat. We're talking 20 minutes, we've got uh, or actually maybe even 18 minutes, and we've got Identity Services Engine integrated with Firepower sharing user to IP mappings. Pretty cool.